And then after that, yeah, it's pretty much all clear, uh, except for my eventual late summer return to glorious Nippon. Oh, hey. Mm-hmm. We'll have to organize some podcast shenanigans then, I suppose. We'll have to figure it out. Because I'm not, I'm not sitting in here in your house by myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, that's not okay. I'm not going to do that. But the return. Mm-hmm. The return happens. Japan Part 2. Erectric Boogaroo. <laughs> Why did you do this? I, I didn't want to do it. Why You didn't want to do it? It just happened. You shut up. <laughs> okay, news. <laughs> uh, I'm traveling to the future. Mm-hmm, uh, yes. We will no longer be constrained by uh, the present and its chains um, because in in Japan, you're in the future. Yeah. So I'll be in Japan, um, heading there for two weeks, and uh, we're still going to have a podcast. Yeah, it just won't be live because it'll be, be fucked stream. up because so, it'll be like midnight or some shit over yeah. here. So we'll just do a Discord and then I'll like do it like usual, like like we used to do. Yeah. Way back when, right before the back stream. Back in the day. When things were cool. The, uh, that's, the, that's the song lyric. Uh, <laughs> it, it was basically yes uh song audio only you know whatever back in the day when things were cool it's a song it's a music it's all right it wasn't for you i'm gonna be in japan i'll see you guys soon so yeah uh i'll be out you know uh do some fun stuff do some fun stuff take pictures of the stuff yeah, still figuring out uh, a couple of the nitty gritty details, but otherwise should be awesome. And I don't know how my schedule. It seems really, really tight. If I can make it work, I might go like hang out at an arcade or something somewhere some mm-hmm. night and be like, "Yo, if you're in this area, you should probably send out feelers for that first. See yeah, how many people would actually show up. Yeah, I'll do that. It's not like you, you know, but I don't I, even know if I have a night for sure. Yeah, either. I'm just saying, like United States or Europe, that's one thing. But like, I ha- there have been a couple of people. There's been at least like a, f- a handful that have been like, "Yo, I live in Japan. Mm-hmm. What's up?" But yeah, I'll put some feelers out just to see, just to see how many people are actually out there. Um, You're gonna give me the keys to let me in, right? Yeah, so I can do the podcast. Clearly, yeah. I promise I won't rub my balls on everything in your house. You can promise anything and everything (laughs) and fuck right off while you're at it. All right. See you on the audio only version of the podcast next week, everybody. Goodbye. I'll catch you in the future. That'd be true even if you weren't going to Japan. (laughs) Show me. Welcome to this all audio version of the podcast. You don't have to worry about the stream annoying you this week. Um, yeah, we don't have to stare at anyone's bag or the cans were in their balls. Um, it's it's back to what it should be. Uh, and 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 it's coming in with the perfect possible timing because not only is this a uh, I'm in Japan and we're making do with what we can situation. But we're on a time limit, and Gamescom is happening. And so just fuck happened. yeah, fuck yeah! At everything going down with this timing, this is awesome. All right, hey, let's let's <laughs> hey hey, we're on a time limit. Okay, here's hey Wooly, how are you? That's good. That's great. My week, I didn't do much I, interesting. I played Destiny. Destiny seems cool. Gambit's a fun mode. That was a cool week. If you want to see more of that, check me out at twitchtv pat. How was your week in Japan? Um, well, I haven't had a week in Japan. I've had like two days in Japan because I just fucking landed. That's cool. That's because great. Because I lost a day. I was actually very so, worried that you were going to get fucked because the day before you went, the all the customs computers in the United States all died. All the customs computers died. Uh, a typhoon and a heat wave hit Japan simultaneously. Um and a million other stupid little things happened. And so there's a, a, all kinds of stuff that could have went wrong. 
Uh, but I, I left. I lost, of course, Saturday. It didn't exist. Gone. Like King, Kim, King Crimson. And um, landed in Osaka and then immediately jumped back on a plane. And uh, now I'm in Okinawa, mm-hmm. uh, specifically Ishigaki Island. And I came out here to try and see the side of Japan I didn't get to see last time, which is like tropical sort of beaches and that side, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. I always hear cool stuff about that. Um, and we land and it's been gray ass downpour the entire time. Fucking so sick. fucking rad. That's super radical. cool. Rolling dice. Yeah. Dice roll vacation. I is love good, it. It's good stuff. Love that. RNG. You really want to put your RNG in your vacation so that you can get surprise mechanics out of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Booking, uh, booking a, a specific local flight, hoping that you'll get there and have a, a decent enough outdoor activity to spend your time doing. And if anything happens, like, oh, it's no bad weather today, we got to do it tomorrow. There is no tomorrow because I'm back on the plane out of here because it's a super tight schedule. So, yeah. fuck yeah. Loot boxes in real life. Let's go. I love it. Both of the times that I went, uh, I was with uh, Paige, and the second time I was with my pal Fuckins, and it was mainly to Osaka, but it was also with this, like, eh, fuck it, what do you guys want to do today attitude, which yeah, ended that's... up having a, a less broad scope, but we were able to alter one or two plans because of, ty- again, Typhoon. Yeah, no, the, the, the scope this, this time compared to last time is way looser, and it's very much a what-the-fuck-do-you-want-to-do-today plan, mm-hmm. um, as we just are in general areas. Uh, it's really about cleanup. It's about This is side quest cleanup, you know? Like, did all the mains, completed the mainline story back in 2014, just coming in to do some extra grinding. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's funny because I'm here... Uh, with my friend Rach and Austin, mm-hmm. there uh, of course he's hanging out, and they are, um, well, I mean, like seeing them go through it. Well, they're not here yet, or I'm here in advance of that. But in the planning phases of this, them going super hard on like how to plan things out and whatnot is kind of like, oh, that's cute. It's I remember my first enthusiastic over planning. <laughs> All right, Excuse so we're going to spend two and... hours here. Then we're going to hit the aquarium. Okay, so the aquarium, how long does it take? Well, I don't know, like 90 minutes. All right. Okay, there's a really good place. we got to go eat. we got to get some amazing sushi over here. And as soon as we're done that sushi, we have to shit it out and and land in the museum. I remember <laughs> like, you just. I remember at one point, me and, uh, me and Fuggins had gone to, uh, we had wandered off and gotten some food. And then we just like wandered back into, uh, we wandered through, um, we went to the Osaka Castle and then we walked all over the place and up getting uh, back to uh, Electric Town. And yeah. we passed people, we passed what looked like, like a fucking joke of a postcard, which was like, looked like my mom and dad, like with a fucking itinerary and the kids. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, staring yeah. at it and just being like, ah, oh, but okay, where where's this one? Oh, we're late. Oh, oh, and the kids are bored, and it's like, fuck, that you, seems you can't, miserable. Can't, you can't do it. Can't do it. Huge mistake. <laughs> anyway, um, I mean, this where I'm at. Like, I, it's also a huge mistake to assume you can fucking master the weather. But we'll see how this works out. There might be sunshine before the end of the day but it's kind of fucking miserable right now um in any case um the other thing to to put out there is last time around remember how it's like hey remember you know the part where you go to japan and you film some funny shit and put it together and make a fun little video haha i do well uh, what everyone what everyone doesn't remember is remember those times when you really were annoying the person you were with slash didn't really want to film, yes. but you kind of had to make some content. Yes. Remember how that impacted your fucking enjoyment of your day? Yes. Yeah. So, so we're trying to lighten that fucking load just to break the, the, the fourth wall a little bit here, but to enjoy my, our time here a little bit more, I'm not going to be walking around with that camera and basically planning out 
Wooly versus Japan as the priority one and me in being here as priority two, you know, mm-hmm. that shit sucks. That shit sucks. Um, not to say that it wasn't worth it. It's, it's still a super fun memory that we have, but I definitely feel bad annoying Steph a bunch of times and annoying myself with that camera, pulling it out and being like, okay, let's try not to bother anybody. Let's do my dumb, embarrassing thing really quickly and then run away, you know? So I do have a couple of things I plan to shoot, but really minimal this time. And it's not going to be a major emphasis compared to like what it was last time. It's so more please gonna do be not like, get hey, hopes man. up. You want to just kick your feet up and chill out in a nice park underneath a perfect sky? Well, that'll be tomorrow, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, and if there happens to be a quick, reasonable thing to film, then that will happen. But otherwise, I'm not hunting for content, <laughs> you know, yeah. in a country. with pe- like It's like, fuck off, man. Um, anyway, it's been nice in the meantime, and uh, thanks to Terrace House, I've sharpened up a bunch of my basic ass bitch Japanese skills and had a couple of cute conversations with some people. So oh, cool. all good, all fun. But anyway, um, we'll, we'll, I'll have more to report next week because for now I just fucking landed, you know, mm-hmm. um, in terms of the week I've had, I just want to talk about two games, I guess, uh, real brief before we get into the news. Are these airplane uh, games? These are not airplane games. Uh, the airplane, uh, was mostly just passed the fuck out because really? this was a t- yeah, well, cause this was a double stretch cause we did for, th- we went via Vancouver. Ooh. So five hours to Vancouver and then the nine from, uh, across the Pacific, you know? Um, but if I can be fully honest and fully disclose the truth. I kind of decided to uh, treat Steph and kind of go a little nuts, and I got her a business class. So, so that the 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 nine hour flight isn't going to leave you a husk of a human being at the end of it. So that's the hardest part. Nine isn't like that bad, I feel. But the one I took from uh, fucking thirteen from LA. I took it from Toronto. Okay. And that was 14-ish. That was, I fell asleep for three, four hours, woke up, and still had ten hours to go. Yeah, yeah. You have a day. Fuck. You have a full pass out, wake up, sleep, and then go, I'm still here. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, but, but in any case, um... You know, a lot of that gets mitigated with the ability to lie down. So, like, that is kind of magical. And it's quite nice to, to eliminate the hardest part of, of the journey. So that's that's super-duper cool. Um, and, yeah, like, just uh, 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 chilling and um, whatnot. Shout-outs to my friend Michelle for hooking us up with a spot in Osaka. That's, mm-hmm. that's very cool. And uh, But what I was going to say is, yeah, I'll have more J- more Japan next week. But well, I didn't play any games or anything. It's more so I just kind of st- – I restarted Joe Jolion on the plane, actually. Really? I started from scratch again. Because I just it's been so long since I uh, since I kind of left off in the middle of it. And it's so fucking impenetrable and, un- 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 like, confusing. And you can barely understand it. So I kind of realized, you know what? Like, I'm just going to start from scratch. Um, so I kind of just did that. Uh, but yeah, two games I played this week. One, Kill a Kill If came out. I'll be also like having a proper like Japan thing to talk about, I suppose, maybe. So. For now, that'll have to do. All right. Obligations well, you have met. a good rest of your day but over in uh, the Japan. I'm going to scrape these uh, audio sessions together and send them to you. <laughs> Lovely. Perfect. But I'm, um, yeah, over the course of this discussion, the rain has stopped and the sun has come out, so it might not be a completely worthless time yet. Looks like it might be salvaged. That's actually pretty dope. I'm glad. All right. All right. Hooray. Everybody have else have a good day. Wooly, I'll see you later. Goodbye. Yeah. It's 9 a.m. Last week it was 9 a.m. for me, so 
It's, I guess it's a ball back, a ball pass back and forth. You know, ball. Shove I was this ball right up your fucking ass. I was gonna take both nine a.m.s. It just happened to work out this way, but uh, this is gonna be an interesting one because energy wise, we're in almost the same place for the complete opposite reasons. Because mm. it's nine a.m. over there on the west side, and by west side, I mean the westerners. I don't know. It's all relative. Um, but over here, think about it over here on the beast coast and by the beast coast, I mean the new era. This bit is so (laughs) awful. Just get it over with. Oh my God. The post Heisei era. Okay. Holy shit. It's 10 PM out here. I'm literally, you want to guess where I am in bed? I'm on fucking bunny Island. Oh, you're on Okunoshima. I'm literally on Bunny Island right now. I'm I'm in the hotel. I'm staying. Oh, cool, man. We're staying overnight at Bunny Island. And it was one of those things where I'm like, I wanted a slow day because, like, yesterday was really intense. And we we got here just as the sun was going down. So we caught the last of the fatty bunnies going to sleep. Mm-hmm. And we got in and, like, yeah, tomorrow is going to be bunny morning. But, like... Either way, it turns out I was just getting ready to sleep in a barn with a bunch of fucking at rabbits jumping around and shit. And mm-hmm. it turns out it's a really classy ryokan. And uh, it's got an onsen in it. So I took a dip and I did the super relaxing, you know, uh, 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 fucking hot bath and all that shit. I'm wearing the robes right now and I'm ready to just drift off. Into the magic night of sleep, so... Um, oh, how wonderful. I, 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 you know... We're... I'm so embittered. <laughs> it just happened to work out this way, dude. <laughs> I'm like, I can't... Hey, how'd you like getting uh, on the ferry at fucking uh, Inaba Station? Yeah, so the, we got on the ferry. I mean, honestly, like, uh, we had a weird one because we, we, we got out at where? I forgot whatever it was. But, like, um, we, we just took the train, the Shinkansen, out to, like, super small little cute town, you know? Um, mm-hmm. But, I, again, I didn't realize this was such a, a, a fancy joint because when I got to the ferry, the ferryman was, like, holding a piece of paper. He's, like, with my name on it. And, and then when I got off, he had a little pocket talk machine that was, like, oh, there's a car waiting for you. So... Apparently, like, if you decide to stay on Bunny Island, you're you're fucking rabbit royalty. So that's nice. Japan feels like a different planet, like, all of the time. You know what we fucking uh, swerved hard on, though, is I uh, was wearing my slippers the whole time, and I realized just before we got here that, uh uh-oh, rabbit shit will be everything. My world Mm -hmm. will be rabbit shit. And mm-hmm. we swerved into a the department store at the last second and picked up some disposable shoes. So, like, thank God, because I'm like, I'm not fucking doing it. Like, I know of all the animal oh. shit you have to deal with, rabbits are probably the least bad. It's like pellets, man. Yeah, it's probably it's probably the least bad. Say any any herbivore is fine, you know. But um, ultimately, I'm still I'll be real, man. I like uh, I did not encounter that issue. Uh, when I went to Okinoshima. Huh. Granted, we didn't stay there. We just took, like, a little day trip. Yeah. But uh, my so, shoes were fine. If I can be real, I went back to your video and I examined your feet to see what was happening down there. Oh, yeah. No, it was burning <laughs> my I, shoes. I wanted to know. Um, but either my way. My shoes got fucking ruined for a different reason because I was wearing them out in the monsoon when I got hit by a monsoon. Mm. And they were just, like, abjectly ruined. It's fine. I got the disposables. We're going to chuck them when it's done. It's all good. Um, we'll see. But uh yeah, no. Cute like and like they the branding of Bunny Island is fucking it's clear. It's the little weird. the little shop where they're like take all these little rabbit pictures, do your purikura and and like we happen to walk in and see like a super huge crazy bunny fan. This lady that was wearing a dress made of like pictures of bunnies and she had a bunny purse and a bunny jacket and was super in just like waiting to go the whole time it was it was really it's really funny and exciting to see her like getting way hype on the ride back from 
uh, the boat to the hotel. Like, she was just staring out the window, like, getting really into it. <laughs> um, Don't you understand? But the bunnies. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna find out tomorrow. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be a thing. Usagi adventure. But speaking of Usagi, yesterday was USJ. Yes. So I don't know what was around well when you did it, but I remember you had you saw the Attack on Titan, and you saw the Resident Evil thing, right? No, though. The, in fact. Part of the trip's misery was that those were not in place. Uh, you remember the opposite of that story, sir. I really thought you got those. Okay, I I I, I vaguely no. re- I vaguely remember a giant Aaron statue, uh, and nope. you describing that. Okay, well, nope. That's a, a complete fabrication of your mind. Okay, well, uh, did the USJ. <laughs> That's sorry to hear. Um, uh, and no I get, idea what the fuck you're talking about. And I, I guess like starting, you know, we, from we got there early in the morning, went in and uh, got the 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 pass that was just like fuck lines, come at this assigned time. You know, um, isn't that great? It's the fucking best. It's uh, do our do our theme parks do that? Or probably do we just do like a pass that skips the I, line. I, honestly, like you can charge people for extra shit. You'd probably, I can imagine they they'd have our theme parks having that as well. Like I know that Disney had some sort of like uh, pass system as well for like the hardcore Disney heads that go, you know, and, and the mm-hmm. ro- the coaster chasers or whatever the fuck they're called. But um, here, I'm just like fuck the roller coasters, fuck all of that. I'm here for fucking anime rides that I'm never going to see anywhere else in the world. Uh, yeah. Such as Harry Potter. <laughs> so that, there, There is an English version of that ride in Florida. Yeah, and I hear it's very similar because, yeah, Austin was telling me about, like, the differences between the two. Um, Steph's a huge Harry Potter mark, so we went to do that. We saw the, the uh, old wand gu- uh, uh, magician guy doing his best Japanese... Mm-hmm. while speaking english and bless his heart he really tried he stumbled a bit over the japanese lines but it was quite impressive that he memorized them to begin with um the harry potter ride is super impressive because they do fucking magic with a really small room like yeah it's it's very tiny i thought it really really felt like a roller coaster but you're just inside of a little like nasa style gyro that's kind of rotating on a track and it moves from one or t- it moves between like three or four dome screens with a couple of props in between them. But you feel like a full roller coaster ride. It's really impressive. Yeah. Um, the drops felt real. The rising felt real. You were on like a broomstick, kind of flying through. Um, but uh, apparently, the first version of this ride had uh, 3D glasses as well, and that was too that fucking seems like much. A- terrible idea that seems awful (laughs) apparently it was too fucking much for people so they just dropped it down to you know this only the just the the dome screen and the movement but it it was it was really fucking cool so that was sick um i don't know if did they do the the collector popcorn buckets when you were there uh not that i remember so they always do these collectible popcorn buckets for whatever's in season at the time and like they had like the sailor moon uh pouch kind of thing um and when we went like the special was supposed to be well basically what they they had was uh the ava head right so a unit mm-hmm. one head that opens up and has the fucking lights go off and then popcorn in its dome and it's super fucked thinking about the context of what this is and and don't worry about it just thinking about hideyaki Anno suffering and and going through the worst of his life while we're feasting on popcorn inside of this thing and having a grand old time. But yeah, no. I don't know. When has fucking... When has consumerism stopped at, like, Ava? Like, Ava's the most... How do I put this? I'm sorry, my brain is fried. That's fine. Ava is the most, like, dissonant property to ever exist with its own merch. Yes... But at the same time, when you're seeing it surrounded and drowning in a sea of minions and Snoopy 
without peanuts. Yeah, that shit's weird. Snoopy without peanuts, mind you, and Minions without Despicable Me. Because what the fuck is that? Who's even peanuts or whatever? Yeah, what is it's, a peanut even? Though it is beyond weird and wild because people are just fucking loving these cute yellow things, whatever they are, wherever they come from. We love them. We need them. Holy shit, we're marking out at the dance party. The Minion dance party is starting now. Um, uh, yeah, so anyway, I did Harry Potter... Uh, did the Sailor Moon ride, which is basically a 4D movie. Um, you know, you put on the glasses and then, like, they do a little adventure. And then uh, uh, everyone, all the sailors show up. And then an evil villain sucks their energy. And then they save the day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was it was interesting seeing a CG version of, of Sailor Moon all in the end. Um, the transformations look pretty good in 3D. Like, that's probably the best part of it. You know, but it was, it was like... Put your hands up, lend her your power, make a heart symbol to, to save all the Sailor Scouts. Yay. You know. Um, but what if you don't do any of that shit? I bet it still saves the day. Then all the kids around you cry and yeah. you, you helped the evil win. So um, Stupid kids. And, and you know, seeing um, Chibi Moon jumping around and whatnot, of course, I, I was loudly asking where the unicorn was because... Don't. Don't do that. <laughs> because we have to. Don't do uh, that. It's fine. It's fine. Why, why? It's, it's in English. The kids don't understand what I'm saying. They don't know. I don't know. They they could understand like one percent of it and just be traumatized for life because they have to remember that episode. It's just weird. Mama, bestiality. What? Nandeska. No. Mama. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, we then got to check out uh, what came second. I want to say we – well, anyway, we got to check out uh, Attack on Titan. So they had the Attack on Titan ride and all of the giant – like um props and stuff was were gone i know earlier on they had like a hand that you could get into that was like a crane and then it lifted you up to a titan mouth and you take a picture of you getting eaten but that shit's gone unfortunately that's kind of fucked it i is. like that yeah 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 but we did the actual ride and i have to say man as someone who is like currently marking out really hard like, I'm super in on, like, the last season and how the plot's coming together. It was really mm -hmm. great to see them kind of do an updated, like, ride where they're like, okay, we're up to date with the current events. And when you're watching the highlights in line, we're showing you, like, the best parts of the story till now and just getting you super hyped and prepped. Um, it was interesting because it was a simultaneously a 3D... 4d movie or whatever they call it it was yeah it was that it was a real effect show light show and it had live action actors in it all at the same time so this they had live action oh weird. yeah so there was like a mixture of all things going on and like you basically had a bunch of the soldiers like there's a stage that looked like a destroyed version of the uh, shishigami mm -hmm. district uh and then a bunch of the the scouts were on stage um, and then moments would kind of jump from the screen to the stage and then back and such. And it's also a room that has screens surrounding you in all directions. So they just played with all of it. They made it like all at the same time. Um, in the end, pretty fucking impressive in a lot of ways. One of the coolest things ever is they're like, so I'm talking about like the most recent season, part three, season three, part two of Attack on Titan. Where they, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're knocking on the walls a little bit, you know, and like you kind of focus on some of those parts. And then suddenly, like, a villain just breaks out of nowhere and, like, uh, like the, the, the screen then, like, kind of blows up and then the live action actors are on the stage fighting, you know, and you're seeing, huh. and you're seeing, like, costumed versions of, like, main characters doing, like, a cool choreography with the, the blades and shit. Um, and it's fucking sick because there's one awesome moment where one of those characters does a fucking bite and then smoke shoots out and fills the room and yellow lights go off and the effect of like a lightning strike kind of feels like it goes down and 
it, it's like like well not not the exact like lightning but like a yellow light kind of shoots up and simulates shit going down so it was pretty hype um the one thing is when it cut to the 3d the 3d was very unfinished very temporary feeling somewhat amateur about? and inferior to even the new game in some moments so, i'm sure it looked great so that was the one part that was like god damn it if the 3d was on par with every other ride here this would have been perfect because like direction and like music and everything and, and live action especially was done super well but that that one thing kind of hurt i heard it you know um still super cool and and all in all like a really that cg is the fucking worst ever like bad i don't know bad animation it I takes feel, you out of it it can, t- it can take you out of it but bad <sighs> like there's a like moment an incredible bulk shit there's a fucking there's fucking a fantastic face. moment where the colossal pops up and you have to turn your head around because it's behind you on a gigantic screen at the rear of the theater but it's pops up and then it stops moving and it just stands still for a while and you're like oh man oh man that's so crazy it's look it's really big but these people in titan costumes are walking around in front and through the, the the crowd and they look freaky as fuck like some of those re- like the big nosed creepy one, the beast titan, the crawling one. Like you sh- you're seeing people in giant like a uh, mascot outfits walking around as titans, and that shit is horrifying. It's great, you know. So that works out well. Um, yeah, uh, and and I think uh, I think it was the last day for a couple of these rides too. So we happened to just squeeze in on the final day to catch them. Um, so there was that. Uh, after that ride, we did, oh yeah, the last one, which was Evangelion versus Godzilla. So, really, uh, yeah, you must have heard about it. Uh, I did not hear about it until just now. They were they were they were popping it. They were pushing it online for a little bit with like a bunch of like crossover art, and then there was that that remember that Mecha Godzilla design that was Ava one colored. Did you not, did you not oh, see that? Okay, that's what that was about. Yeah, so that was a a promotional thing to go with this USJ ride because after Shin Godzilla was directed by Anno, why not right. just take that to the natural conclusion and create a short film about it? And while you're creating that short film, let's turn it into a ride. So the po- why the fuck not? Yeah, so the popcorn bucket they had was the the purple Ava God uh, Mecha Godzilla head. And that thing was limited, and, and, and it was pretty cool looking. But the but the actual trip itself is super interesting because it's like okay, you're in a fictional setting, you're in Osaka three, right? A future of city, course, of course. And you're seeing like Osaka landmarks and whatnot. Um, and suddenly, what the fuck is this? An unknown angel attacks, right? And its power is immeasurable. It's flying off the charts, and Misato is is super lost and confused by it. But here it comes. Aw, shit, it's Godzilla. What do we do? Send out the kids. Do your best, you know? And uh, you, get to, you get to see, like, um, when Godzilla shows up, thank fucking God, it's Shin Godzilla. So it's like... You mean a Godzilla that can actually be defeated by humans? <laughs> It's 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 the one that Anno created as basically an angel in its own way. Since the soundtrack of that movie is straight up just Evangelion anyway, um, and the CG in in this in this uh, ride is like by far the most expensive and the best looking. Like that makes sense. Yeah, All yeah. Sense the, the, these properties put fucking money to it. Toho f- bankrolled the shit. So um, you know, Asuka Ray and Shinji are like flipping off of each other doing triple techs you know what i mean like like basically like they're fighting like ninja turtles fight where they kind of roll over each other's backs and do successive moves it was cool to see that you know um and your seats are jumping and bending and flickering around as you get swung and then shinji has to pick you up in his hands and fight for a bit and stuff so that's all fun 
Uh, and then Godzilla's kind of just like, whatever, get the fuck away from me. He's just kind of ignoring them because he's looking somewhere else. And then, of course, like, while they can't hurt Godzilla because Godzilla doesn't give a fuck, uh-oh, here comes Ghidorah, the real problem, you know? And then they were like, oh, no, was Godzilla actually just ignoring us because Ghidorah was coming? Is he the real enemy? So you get to see that. Well, they just all punch that fucking dragon in his tank and that's sh- like and 10 minutes yeah and then you get you get some cool combo attacks and fun stuff goes down so uh shinji fucking runs off the tail and does a cool fucking stab and it's 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 cool it's legit fun and and like the whole time you're being carried around in a giant sort of helicopter piloted by kaji you know so oh, of course yeah that's how oh okay um and the, and there's some moments of like I like how do I put this in the in the loading in the in the loading in the line when you're waiting they're doing a briefing for the whole world and stuff and then right before you go you into you fucking asshole you just called a line <laughs> like a real life loading screen because because there's images scrolling you're fucked there's images you're scrolling fucking warped and you feel like you're in a fucking loading screen and then. When the loading screen finishes and the attendants come out and they go, all right, everyone, please get ready to go inside. Suddenly, the pleasant Osaka 3 is stuff shit shuts down and stops. And then the fucking uh, conflict music starts to kick in. And then all the lights mm-hmm. go dark and the red glow and the Ava, like you're in a you're in a collapsing Sele base feeling starts going down and you're like i this is actually kind of terrifying like being surrounded on all sides by nothing but that warm glow you know and then you're just like the feeling of being in that elevator starts to kind of happen it's good it's a good ride nice um yeah so so you know usj will always be worth it just so that you can catch some shit that will never make it to america ever um and put that on the your your mental bet docket everyone there will never be a harry potter ride in north america ever not a one i will say though that if they took that harry potter tech and combined it with attack on titan to make 3d maneuver gear it would be the greatest ride of all time Full. Oh, the, come on, the money difference. Is I know, I know. Astonishing. Harry Potter single-handedly saved USJ is what I was told, you know. Um, yeah, that makes sense. But, like, full credit to, to Punch Mom for that idea. Where it's just like, imagine putting 3D Maneuver gear on this type of seat that just moves around. It'd be unbelievable. Um, of course, we also got to do Jaws, which was a really fun one, actually. Uh, you're doing Jaws is I loved it. Yeah, yeah, like surprisingly incredible for a little short, quick ride. You know, um, did you get like I don't know what kind of what kind of skipper did you get? What do you mean skipper? The 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 boat captain. Christ, I don't even remember. Because we got this spunky little girl that was kind of just like, yeah, let's do it, everybody. I'm going to show okay, you the, the way through the beach. That is what I received. Now I remember. Yeah, and then it's like, oh, animated. pay no attention to that thing over there. There's a little bit of rocky water, but <laughs> okay. Nervous laughter, and then she gets out the shotgun and like, die, you know, like taking shots at it and stuff. And then at the end, kind of being like, hey, everybody, don't don't worry about what you saw there. Anyway, it was, it was fun. Um, and apparently, like I like from what I understand... This is it's one of those things where they have fucking uh, they actually have a water world section still running to this day. Oh yeah, I, I took footage of it. Okay, if you remember. But now water world, it's like it's still there, but they dropped one piece on top of it. <laughs> that <laughs> makes perfect sense. Because what the that f- is like so yeah. What are we going to do? Push a Kevin Costner vehicle to Japan in 2019? Hey. Or just put a fucking Luffy hat there? The ocean. Yeah. Yeah. AKA water. Shoutouts to um, the the 
in California, apparently there being a really elaborate water world ride that was going on during the drought. <laughs> <laughs> where and, where every single show they would just dump tons and gallons upon gallons of oceans of water to fucking do water world and there's a drought going on uh but anyway um they they have that and we didn't make it to it but it sounded like there was a legit backdraft ride as well I remember that. I'm sad because... I, remember, I don't think I got on it, but I, I remember there being a backdraft ride. It was 15 minutes. It was the shortest line. And the the power vehicle that is backdraft, a.k.a. the sentient fire that chases the firemen around that try to out it and, and haunts the heroes to this day and slips into the fireman's locker and targets him to kill him backdraft we didn't get to go on it but i was so hyped to see what, that is stupid as shit i was i forgot what backdraft even is fuck yeah man the fire knows i wanted to see japanese backdraft more than anything but we didn't have time for it um we had to squeeze our way through the fucking minions at every left and right corner so you know that's how that's how it do i actually rode that ride in both of its incarnations the minions ride i'm i shit you not it's just the fucking old back to the future ride jury rigged into a different uh, fucking setup yeah 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 so attack on titan had that where you're walking through the 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 line and it's like pay no attention to the fucking uh cyberdyne logos on the walls as you walk by pay no attention to the fact that these newspaper people that are reporting on you from the trost district have these glowing lights on the wall behind them that may or may not be uh, servers from the fucking uh, uh, Skynet ride when they had Terminator there not but a couple months earlier, you know? Like, the ability the ability to just, like, strip down 90% of it and play Plaster Attack on Titan there but still have these little bits and pieces peeking through is kind of weird. But, but uh, yeah, this is immersion ruining. I said, don't worry about it, God damn it. All right, well, <laughs> anyway, um, USJ, good old time. Bunny Island, good time so far. We'll see how it goes tomorrow morning with the actual bunnies and the feeding and the treats, you know. And, uh, yeah, Japan's coming together. It's coming together. They can't say we didn't do it. We did it. They could. We hit all the boxes. We hit all the dockets. We talked about everything as usual. We had a banter. We had a chat. We took some emails. We did a full episode. They can't say we didn't do it. We didn't talk about anything like purely revolting this week, though. Do you want to fill that quota? Do you have anything particularly disgusting you want to ruin people's lives with? Um, toilets in Japan have water really, really low in the toilet really low it's all dry bowl so yeah. so when you have to sit down and use the toilet you're hitting yeah. dry you're hitting dry the whole time yeah so that, I like that and when you flush the water is only going to do so much motherfucker yeah no i like yeah no that's good so get used to graf- the dry bowl lets you admire your work graffiti graffiti stains you getting it looks like a car is doing donuts in the fucking bowl. Looks like Takumi's drifting on his way down. That's Japan. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Hello. Hi, everybody. Wooly, you're back. You're alive. You I'm made back. it. I did. You journeyed across the seas to come back to us in regular live-ish format. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm here. I'm not actually too sleep um, deprived or or which my chat lagged for that matter. Uh, sure, it'll hit you tomorrow or the day after or something like that. Yeah. I'm. Well, if it gets bad, I'll take a melatonin and reset everything. But for now, I'm okay. Just did. Just 
Does that just work for you? I, I mean, it does because I don't use it very often. Okay. So the trick to melatonin working is when you don't use it very often, it works really I well. I tried it once. It didn't do shit. And then I tried it like again. <laughs> Excuse me. And it double didn't do shit. And I was like, thanks. <laughs> thanks, over-the-counter herbal medication. Boof. Um, yeah, uh, but easily um, a a a. That's one. Of, it was a. It was the 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 return trip was broken up into two halves because we went through Dallas first. So it was oh, like, you did that one weird. Yeah. So it was basically honestly when I looked at the clock uh, in in Tokyo when we got back home, it had been twenty four hours since we had departed for the airport. Yeah. So whatever the 13 or 15 or whatever it was in an actual flight doesn't matter because add the prep time and it's a full 24 hours and then of travel. sitting around in the airport. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, back, good. It's far. It's a very far place. Um, It's super worth it, but fuck. It's far. Fuck, is it? The, it's the furthest you can get without... Uh, needing to... It's possible that Australia resort. would be farther because you have to go north-south as well. It's the furthest point on the map worth going to. <laughs> I'm... I... I like, True that, my let's friend. Let's just be real. Oh, no. Let's just be real. It's the furthest dot worth going to. I Come can on. hear some, some, some angry didgeridoos in the distance, and that's but don't fine. worry about if that. If you have adventure in your spirit, if your soul calls to the wild, then go yonder into the unknown venture. Yes. But if your soul calls for anime yeah. and video games and, and weeb shit and anime byproducts that you can safely consume in the safety of your home with your comfy, comfy civilization around you. Then yeah, that's the dot you want to go to. Mm, civilization. You can get out to Kamchatka. You can get out to fucking <laughs> South Pole if you want to be on one of those limited flight trips. Or South Pole seems cool. You can go hit up Madagascar if you want. You know, and let's be real. I actually kind of think it would be cool to check out Madagascar. Not gonna lie, but the dot of places left that I want to go on the map is really, really, really shrunken. Uh, over the years. There's not many places I really want to go. There's one place I desperately want to go, but I probably won't be able to go there before I die. And that's Earth orbit. Sure. Yeah, not going to happen. Maybe. But, I mean... Anybody work in SpaceX? You can vomit, Comet. <laughs> no. That's that's the closest you'll get. I want to look down on the whole Earth within my frame of vision. My My perception. Um, dots on the map, I, I still, I really, really have, for a long time for years, I've been obsessed with Angkor Wat. I'm, I'm saying it wrong, but it's the really beautiful temples in Cambodia. Yeah. That shit's really gorgeous. I really want to see that. Um, I've never done a Euro trip. I've never really wanted to do a Euro trip. Listen, okay, so I've explained this over and over. I feel identically to you, not the Angkor Wat part, but the Europe thing. Okay, many people don't understand this. I think it's a Montrealer thing, because I remember like, a bunch of kids in my high school being like, well, we're going to London for the trip. I'm like, who give the fuck is giving to London? Go down to Ottawa. It looks looks like shitty London. And it's like, oh, we're going to go to Paris. I'm like, just go down to the fucking old port, and you're in Paris. Like, what the f- like, yeah. Euro- Europe? Like, yeah. the west half of Europe is, like, downtown. Yeah, we live in the most European city in What's North the America, fucking point? So that is a huge part of it. You want to see a guy smoke too much and maybe spit on your food? Go down to fucking St. Catherine. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's that. That's not... It's not hard to see a bunch of horses and stone stone streets and old-style buildings and cathedrals. We can get that. I saw a horse walking around today! It's, it's very easy to do. There are right. tourists in it! Well, no, not in the horse, in the carriage. Yeah. That's different. But there, but there are some particular sights and sounds um, that I'd want to, I'd, I'd be, might be curious to check out. But for the most part, yeah, there's a huge dark spot in terms of interest. Um, that at, whole middle part, in that whole middle part, <laughs> from from here all the way over, 
uh to just the to, to now we just got to pretty much hit that old fucking spice trade route <laughs> you know that's where the interest lies cuz there's just nothing in between that that I care about and I'm like look man like I got your Russia you're cool you're big there's cool stuff in Russia I I can do without it you know um I could do with like I said probably I could do without probably you know whatever anyway I if if things pop up that are like holy fuck, then I can easily be swayed, right? Because, yeah. like I said, Cambodia, I don't really care about Cambodia as much as I want to check that place out. All right, here's a quote from Wooly, Wooly Madden, everyone. I don't really care about Cambodia. Put but, that up on your Twitter. <laughs> but I'll have you know, well, the important, hey, I literally, some of my best friends are Cambodian. Oh, yeah, yeah, I bet. <laughs> because the, the strongest players in Street Fighter in, in Montreal are all Cambodian. So really, yeah, that's the thing. Oh yeah, is that like how the uh, the the Pakistanis are coming out of nowhere to kill everyone at Tekken? I mean, Chirithi <laughs> is is totally Cambodian, yeah. Khmer as they call it, Khmer SF, and like him and the whole the old all the OGs, all the best Marvel players, they're all Cambodian. It's nuts. Um, What's going on in Cambodia? It, nothing, but like we all grew up. I, I just I told you I grew up in an area of Montreal uh, called Saint Laurent. That just happened to have the arcade with the maximum competitiveness going on mm-hmm. outside of the downtown core. And I just got lucky being in that area. And everyone around that area happened to be Cambodian. So that's how it went. So, but so it's, 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 it's less ethnic or national. It's more about what small like community did the arcade happen to be placed next to? Pretty much. <laughs> and then that's what, what it became. Although, yeah, I want to go see those temples. That's cool. Um... You need to draw on the wall. Japan's dope. Uh, Japan is... I I feel really like... As I was on my way out, because it's been about a half month, I feel like I have finally started to really cement, like, okay, I can communicate. It's it's really rough. It's really coarse. It's, You're communicating right now. I can communicate in Japanese. See, that's a form of communication. And, and that, that was not clear. See, you're getting and, better every day. And I can, and it's one word, sometimes two word statements, half sentences, you know, really broken and fucked up. But I've got enough to catch um, basic context. Mm-hmm. And, and here's the thing is, and this is how I know, because I'm the same way with French, right? When yeah. it comes to it, I've been around it my whole life. And... Like now, listening to my friend who lives there, who's she's super fluent, speaking with cab drivers, yeah, and listening to other people talking and whatnot, I'm like, oh, I completely understand that conversation. Yeah, right. The the the, the Montreal bilingual conversation, for those of you who don't know, often goes, "Hey, how are you?" Um, uh, the, the, it's like, no, no. You speak in French. Yeah, I'll yeah, speak yeah. in English. Yeah, and we'll just make this worse. So w- work. Blah blah blah. So last time I would just kind of you know use my use whatever basic terms I could to get around. This time around, especially having watched a bunch of Terrace House, I, I literally was I'm like, it's a dumb place to pick it up, but I picked up some things that I'm like, oh yeah, oh, it's a better place to fucking pick it up than anime. Than anime, yeah. And I was I definitely had that fear that I'm like, oh no, do I just am I one of those stupid fucking people that thinks that you're like, oh, I watched some anime and played some video games, I know what I'm doing. Yes, and like, yes, you I are. am. I am. But thankfully, I I I I did a little bit of supplemental yeah. work around that and got it just decent enough. I remember to be able to say that I got through. We got through the the, the trip, all right. And like um, when like yeah, we were able to get where we needed to go the whole time, whatever. <laughs> and and in most cases, most stores, most whatever, like taxi rides and such, have full, have conversations. Yeah. I was able to do it. I kept up, you know, I was pretty happy with the results. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I can actually do this at a at a, like an elementary school level if I like started to apply it. So I'm like, okay, well, yeah, that's somewhere. In all honesty, the hardest part of learning a new language is the part that you did do with video games and anime, which is you you got to the point. I remember for a while ago, one of my language teachers taught me this. It's like the hardest part of any new language is going from quote bar 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 bar. Where words aren't distinct and people are just going, blah, 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 blah. like, no, you can't tell the difference between somebody fake speaking it and mm-hmm. real speaking it mm-hmm. and going, oh, that's a word. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that word fucking means, but it's a word. Yeah. Um, no, now now Thanks, it's anime. like, 
yeah, now it's now it's actual keywords popping up, and I'm like, oh, I know what the subject matter of this sentence is. Gaijin, huh? Hmm. Hmm. Guy Kokujin. Oh yes. Don't say. Don't wanna, oh no. No disrespect there. Oh what? <laughs> oh okay. Uh, anyway, so um, I guess since since we last left off, uh, wherever uh, oh, I was on Red Bull on my pants. I was. I think I was on Bunny Island. Crap. No. Wait. Well, the last podcast preview was the bunnies. Yes. Yeah, I was on Bunny Island. That's where I left it the off. The fun time Bunny Island where nothing ever went wrong. Don't you worry about now it. Now that you... Because I told you about it when I had been there. But now that you have been there, isn't the fucking dichotomy between this is the poison gas war crime plant... Bunnies! And, like, there's no overlap at all in the presentation of the island. They they actually incorporate that into the little m- movie you watch if you go to the Poison Gas Museum. So you can go check out uh, the little, you know, a small little museum where they have a couple of signs up. And it's a very, like, yep, there was some really bad things here. And for the most part, it, it focuses on, like, how... It badly affected the people working there, and oh, how the probably real bad. itself got fucked up. <laughs> All of the photos of the damage the poison does were photos from foreign lands and foreign, far away people and foreign bodies, people that don't matter, foreign babies. Oh wow! Didn't see that part. It was closed the day we went. Yeah, there. yeah. Nothing, nothing too close to home in terms of photos, but uh, nonetheless, that was there. And God forbid, no bunnies. And then they went over, and then there's a kind of a, it was a, they really had a lot of detail on how the production, like, of the poison went, and how they, this was the hidden island that was, that was chosen, and so on and so forth. And then there was a, the smallest plaque on the entire wall was the one that said, um, the actual use of the poison in the war to this day is still unknown in its application, and, uh, it can be certain that, Many were harmed beyond the context of those on, that were making it on this island. And poison is a very bad thing that should never be so, used. So, a big old plaque that says, mistakes were made. Essentially, right? It really did not go into how it was used. It was just about the production of it and those it hurt The saddest in that thing case, is it's, like, you know? it's the most idyllic, beautiful, scenic location that has ever been. Like this perfect little island. It's very, it's the, cute. There's islands around. It's and cute. The water, and it's like, yeah. They also only mention bunnies once when they say like the application of one dot, one drop of this to a, a, a rabbit skin can change the color entirely in one day or whatever. And they're like, how do you know that? And like accident, one of the bunnies found an old. Tube. You don't know. I don't even. Yeah, you just, you just, you move on. You move on. So anyway, um, that was uh, that was Bunny Island, um. Mis- mistakes uh, and known miracles. As, uh, Okuroshima. Yeah. Um, and yes, exactly. But check out the really cute everything everywhere. Oh, yay. The bun buns. Mm-hmm. I got one to sit on my lap. Oh, they don't give a shit. Yeah. You just you do the leading and then there it go. It's one of those areas where the, the, the same thing with Nara, where the distinction between wild animal and tame animal is really vague. The difference is the deer are assholes. Well, deer are assholes. As a whole, as a race. They are bad. We can condemn them. People think that deer are cute and wonderful, and they are, but they are also bad and mean. Be sure to say the word deer very frequently while we talk about how that entire race of assholes deserves what they have coming. You say as you didn't actually <laughs> deer. include the word deer in that sentence, Wooly. <laughs> Uh, but um, I remember being a kid and being like, yeah. "How could you hunt the beautiful deer?" And now I'm like, "Ah, shoot the deer, fuck them." Yeah, they're dicks. But bunnies uh, are they're they're assholes too, but they don't have the means to disturb you as much. Don't they can't dis- disturb you? Uh, I remember somebody who used to live on a farm who described that if you leave the wrong bunnies together in a pen. You walk into a blood-covered rabbit and a bunch of decapitated heads. The first rabbit we saw upon walking out from the hotel was one with a giant chunk of its right eye missing. It was a huge badass. It was almost a badass scar, yeah. but it was so wide that it was more like a Terminator scar. Yeah, you know, that's cool. It was a Kano thing without the metal plate. And someone fucking just took a chunk out. And it just kept going. You know what's weird? 
when you look at when you look at like a like a character that has a big old scar, that's meant to show that they're hardened, yeah. right? Yeah. But in reality, it usually means it lost. Yes. <laughs> like you, it's not you, you ate shit very it's, hard. It's not like, oh, look how tough it is. Like, no, that's the bitch one that lost. The the cool one is immaculate because it won every time. Yeah, that one should have died, but yeah. didn't, you know. Um anyway the so bunny island was was followed up with uh the trip over to return to hakone uh that's up north where the last time it's where i got it's the point though that i said frodo left middle earth it's where you we just took this amazing little uh um like train rail car ride through the mountains doing a little studio ghibli thing then got up onto a rope car and then on sends and all that good stuff they should build a life-size Evangelion unit to tower over that city. Well, there is a giant Ava head that it's not in that city. It's in another city. Yeah, it's an amusement park thing. But when you do get to Hakone, through Hakone they are very... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're very clear. They're very clear about it being Tokyo 3. Yeah. And as you as you take the winding side ray roads and you see all those little like turns and like diagonal... Yeah, um, walls where you're expecting the missiles to flip out of. Yeah, that is all raw Hakone. Uh, so, yeah, that that was uh, cool. Although this time around, um, there was a typhoon warning and there was volcanic activity. Sick. So we had to shut down a lot of that cool ways to get there. Well, like, I gotta ask and take you, a taxi if you're up instead. Die some kind of natural disaster. We've already covered this kind of question. Would I've it not given... be? No, this is a slightly different question. Would it at least not be super cool to die by getting volcanoed? No, is that not because cool? lava? I found out is not the lava for movies. You don't fall into it like molten liquid. And oh then no, melt. you you skid on it and burn. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. So you will stop. You will be standing on it as it roasts you. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's not fun. I thought, but, if, but like I'm like, hey everybody, podcast delayed this week. Woolly fell into a volcano. Yeah, yeah. Well, like Woolly dies mean, in magma. Yeah, that's, that's the actual. Yeah. Koji Kabuto dies yeah, in magma. Yeah, I know. yeah. I, but but man, that's a that's a bad way to go because it's heavy and it's thick and it's like rock. Wooly Wooly went down. It is to rock. Hakone and was like, I'm gonna reenact Magma Diver, the shittiest episode of Evangelion, and was like, Oh no, I'm dead. Well, anyway, um, the 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 volcano activity meant that the ropeway was shut down, so we had to instead take a replacement bus. Um, so we did a side view, not as pretty trip through the mountains, but it was still dr- still driving through clouds because yeah. the mountain was literally high up and to be into, to be in the clouds. Uh, we had a really great time um, and got to that same place where Middle Earth came to an end. But this time we took the boat. Last time we were like, where does that boat go? Who knows? We'll never find out. This time we got on the <laughs> fucking boat and uh, the boat led us to a gorilla. All right. Next to an ice cream stand. Okay. And we had some ice cream, and then we went back. Like a gorilla, or yeah, like, a gorilla. like one of the? There's a gorilla who's sitting there, and there's some ice cream, and then we just like a like... real one. I mean, no, it was stuffed. It was a cute, okay, a cute stuffed gorilla. The reason I asked is because like the other day I refound that photo of like do not fight the monkey. The mm. monkey will defeat you. <laughs> image mm. that is not at Hakone, but mm. it is in Japan. Uh, there was also a lot of vending machines with the most tonally dissonant Ava, like, st- merch and stuff you've ever seen. Okay, worse than the Gendo Akari shaving ad. Because uh, that's the that, one. I don't, I'm not familiar with that Oh, you've one. never seen it? I don't think I've seen it's that like one. It's like a fucking chick razor for Gendo, and he shaves his beard, and he goes, and he claps, and goes, ah, and he does a big smile and a thumbs up. Wow. And it's like, what the fuck is this? Wow. Okay. No, I'm just talking about, like, little vending machines with, like, Ray wearing a yukata, looking very, very happy and pretty. Oh, she has a smile on? Hanging out that's with... That's wrong. Hanging out with Pen Pen. Oh, Yeah. And they're just celebrating. Hakone. That's technically a possible future. And you're just like, yeah, well, it's it's all possible within the bubble, right? And once you go inside the the instrumentality, everything so, was possible. All those all, all mangas and universes where everyone was happy all happened inside. So as you see, there's a there's currently a no context uh, woolly uh, Twitter account, which I've been enjoying very much. Mm-hmm. My the I have had one for a little while because I love it, but my favorite one applies to this conversation, 
which is, quote, I didn't expect a million billion action figures of kid who jerks off on friend in a coma. Hmm. Right? Mm. Which is all my go-to for Evangelion merchandise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which, fucking what? Yep. I understand it's very popular. Yep. But, huh? Uh, Ava was honestly the theme of almost this entire trip, because it was everywhere. Uh, Like, especially after UFJ, then Hakone, and then back in Tokyo at the Ava store. It was a bit nuts how much there was everywhere, and truly you can live more multiple days if not months using nothing but eva eva merch uh to eva already everything. happened right we're past the point where eva would have taken place already must be was that like 2015 or something i mean like maybe not if you count the time skip but <sighs> yeah um so anyway that was that was uh, a really dope time uh i got back into to well not back i returned to tokyo after that because before that was osaka mm-hmm. first day i had booked uh, the Kirby Cafe. And? Went over to the Kirby Cafe. Was definitely not the usual audience what? that really? this establishment has. <laughs> what? How, what do you mean? I stood out quite a bit. Amongst the 12-year-old girls that usually go there, uh, I assume. Actually, so you had the uh, maybe like 7-year-old boys and girls with oh their parents. Oh, my and then you had oh, the man. Uh, much older, like 22, maybe 40-year-old woman taking photos of the cute Kirby things. Oh, man. Uh, so you have about 20 to 40-year-old woman taking photos of the cute Kirby plates and things. Uh, you have all the children. And then there is I. Uh, and you best fucking believe I was getting my photo at the same sit and pose with DDD and everything sh- sh- corner, and I took it, and the photo lady was like D D D D pop, and then took the photo, and then I I got my order, I ordered my fucking plate, I kept it, it was delicious, uh, I sat alone. <laughs> that's the worst part. No, that's not the worst part. Oh no. Because there's one thing we know about the Kirby Cafe. Yeah, what's that? It's that photo that says, when you go alone, what happens? Do you remember what happens? I don't. When you go alone... Wait, did you engineer this on purpose? When you go alone... No, it's literally the only booking that could have been made. Okay. I definitely would have went with my friends, because we were, I was, we were yeah. there as a group. But uh, it, was the only, it was the only slot in the time frame that we were there. So when you go alone, you're supposed to be sitting at a seat and if you are uh there by yourself they put a waddle d in the seat opposite <laughs> you so that you won't be eating alone <laughs> this is a this is a, a photo that's been shared everywhere oh, online no. for a while now it's the sympathy waddle d i came in sad that there was no availability for anyone else but me but at least i would have my waddle d i was not given a waddle d what i was actually lonely oh no. Sami Shi. Oh, no. <laughs> it was bad. This is really weird. I but I nonetheless, story. nonetheless uh, enjoyed uh, the food. <laughs> it was tasty. And I bought a couple of, I bought a lot of Kirby merch. Not yeah. a couple. I bought a lot, a lot of Kirby merch. Yeah. Whole bunch of it. Yeah, that makes it, sense. It was right underneath Tokyo Tower, not Tokyo Tower, the Sky Tree, which is the we're bigger than Tokyo Tower Tower. Does that... Okay, because does the Sky Tree fucking connect to Midgard? I mean, <laughs> it really... I think it was made in retaliation for others that surpassed Tokyo Tower. I think that's kind of how that... I kind of miss that. The the Burj Dubai kind of ruined that world race. We all got... We have ours as tallest. It's... No yeah. ours is. I, I, the problem with that race is somebody's, somebody's going to enter that race... With incompetent engineers. Yeah, totally. And then the worst will happen. Sick. <laughs> okay, well. As long as it's not in my town. There you go. Um, of course, uh, got to go check out the Gundam. Um, you know what? So the Unicorn Gundam is replacing the RX-78. Mm-hmm. Blasphemy, some might say. How dare you? Mm-hmm. By some, I mean me. Because what the fuck are you doing? It's the RX-78. The unicorn's great, and it's a cool look. But, I mean, the original's the original. 
if you were if you were gonna do go if you're gonna commit to always updating it to be the current thing then i would understand but you're picking one and you're replacing the original with one and you chose the unicorn and it's like all right man i really but you know what i went to go check it out at night so that you could see all the lights doing the thing that's cool and it was awesome it was fucking rad the color change, the whole V fin separation, and then it was also one of those things where it was the anniversary, so um, 40th anniversary. So they were doing the um, scenes of multiple Gundam things throughout history, and as each scene would change the lighting on the entire thing, mm-hmm. uh, it was it was really nice. It was really really rad. Um, super worth it. The worst part about about going to see Gundam up at Odaiba is that it's super far to get there. It's like a 40 minute. 45 minute trip sometimes from middle of Tokyo it takes almost an hour if you really add a lot to it but we were tired at the end of the day you can't pick too many things to do when you're going to Tokyo yeah. you can't you have to honestly pick one thing maybe two and that's about it cuz you will find yourself filling it with other things you wander around into yeah. uh, in this case it was the third thing of the day so we did it just by taxiing it was a yeah. tw- 20 minute taxi you know mm. so that was that was a nice shaver um uh, beyond that, Akihabara, of course it happened. I've done it before, so it was, you know, I was used to it. But um, Rach and Austin, who I went with, they were there for the first time, just over-fucking-whelmed, as you would. Uh, we did the Mandarake. Yeah. Skir- skir- skirped, skirped all the way through. Um, there's Ami Ami and, and Kurobukuya. Uh, hit up that doujin floor. Saw them books. Accidentally, like, walked into, uh, like, a store that, that, that was divided into the BL section and then the rest. And What's that? Sorry? The BL section. I'm sorry. What was that? Did you define that we, for, we the, walked, for the podcast? Oh, that, uh, that's Boy Love. Oh, yes. And uh, walked in and basically had a definitely a, a group of uh, patrons that were like, are you in the right place? And I'm and like, then you were like, yeah. I'm like, am I? Give me a second. Let me find out. I'm not sure. For those of you at home who are not watching, I'm holding up a doujin of... Wait, what? Can you see who's on the cover of this book? That's fucking Rorschach and comedian and fucking <laughs> uh, Adrian Velt or Osmandius. A Watchmen fan book. What the fuck is this? I am so happy. <laughs> I found a cute little Watchmen fan book and... Uh, Let's, Did you find that in the BL section? I mean, it's got some fun stuff. It's Roshak hanging out, eating a pizza. He's enjoying pets, because we know that Roshak loves pets. And, uh, look, he's feeding feeding the, the kitty, you know? So, this is the part where we mention, again, for those of you who don't know, copyright law in Japan? Loose. Real loose. I mean, the the doujin, nobody gives a fuck. The doujin industry is very vibrant and 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 thriving. Nobody gives a shit. Comicette in its entirety is nothing but right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, it's a very fun, cute <laughs> fan book, and and it's again, you got like you got Rorschach hanging out with the animals. Oh yeah. You know, and then you got uh, an examination of. Uh, Dr. Manhattan and his glutes being really, really tight, and everyone being like, Why are your glutes so tight? What's up with that? So, it's good stuff. Got my Watchman Dojin. That's weird. Super into it. That's really, really happy. Weird. Good find. One of a kind. Um, I would say that, yes. <laughs> uh, also, uh, for. I'm. I think I can say 19 years. Mm. I have been searching for something I saw a picture of on the internet, and could never, ever, ever find until this time around. What does he have now? This box right here. Oh, I don't it's know. It's some kind it. of stupid plane. This is <laughs> the Ikaruga model kit, and I can't believe it was back in stock after. What must have been 20 years. Yeah. So I fucking bought it. So are you going to put it together yourself? Um, I was thinking you about better. it. Because I can do a, I can do a good... Coward. No, I can do a good job with the, with the shaving and the sanding. But I can't do a good job with the painting. Right? So if I put it together, it's just going to look like the plastic default version. Mm-hmm. With, the, with, the, with the stickers on it. 
And I want it to look way nicer than that. So I might give it to a friend who can do a much better job than I can. Because mm. that's what I did with my Kingdom Death. That's what I do, did with my Kshatriya uh, currently being worked on. So, um, yeah, I might just have to do that. Because I, I don't want... This is a one of a fucking kind. I don't want to fuck that all. One of a kind, except for the part where I bought two. But <laughs> one of a kind, except for the fact that it's a boxed retail product. It was gone for so long, and now it's back. And one it's, of a kind. And it was the. It's the. I can't do twenty years. Yeah. Like that is a like I am walking out of the store violently holding these things, my babies. Um, also, they had some cool near stuff. Uh, I I honestly opted. I'm like, you know what? If I'm gonna buy near merch, I either want a giant amazing statue, yeah, or what I saw was perfect is a collection of all the weapons. And I was like, that's cute. I like that. I'm gonna get that. So, uh, Akiba was, uh, uh, of course, a very full day. Um, last thing that we ended the trip on is the most tourist trappy kitsch ass yeah roll your eyes if you're a local and you hear these two words put yeah. together attraction ever it's called the robot restaurant oh yeah i don't know if you've heard of it i have you ever seen pictures of it no but uh paige has been there she tells me uh that uh i gotta go sometime okay anyone who's from there goes "Ugh." i went to this thing not knowing what it was i mistook it for something else because I heard that there was a restaurant somewhere. Um, in fact, there's a guy in Terrace House that was involved with it. That it's a restaurant where these little robots come up to you, and yeah. there are your waiters, and they're being operated by people with disabilities elsewhere remotely. Mm -hmm. And it's like that's a little cafe that does that. And I was like, yeah. oh yeah, that sounds that sounds cool. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not what the robot restaurant is. No, at all. the robot restaurant is a fucking. Uh, it is what your parents think Japan is. <laughs> Turned into a, a show while yeah. you eat yeah. at a little fucking school desk sized ta tray table thing. Yeah. Um, the, the walls are adorned with celebrities who have, who have visited. There is no Japanese anywhere in sight. Yeah. The moment you enter, it is extremely English. Yeah. Um, and it is basically, yeah, it's like... All the flashing lights, all the wacky imagery, all the Mount Fuji cutouts and samurais and ninja things like flying <laughs> past each other and like super over the top classic, like t typical music and whatnot. And then the show starts and it's just people in costumes and robots and machines that they're riding, like skating, going by each other as they do fucking neon taiko, like with like Tron aesthetics and it's fucking glorious, man. It sounds awesome, dude. It's rad. Lasers and swords and mechs and idols and just nonsense, right? It's like the Simpsons going to Japan episode. Yeah. It's anything South Park ever did about Japan. Yeah. It's complete and utter fucking nonsense. It's kitsch without knowing it's kitsch, right? And it's Do you like... Think it, they don't know? It, they definitely don't know, right? To the point where they do... Like in, they do like a little Power Rangers thing, and like they do like narration about the the world being in trouble because of the the uprising and then the saviors and all that. Yeah, and it's written in an English that is aware of English, so it's making it misspelled on purpose. Uh, oh, so you're reading it going like, no, 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 that's not genuine English. You put that in there for the pop. Oh. Right. That's weird. Very weird. But nonetheless, the visual spectacle of the whole thing is fucking incredible and super worth it. And I can't pretend that I didn't enjoy the shit out of it the entire time. You know, like it's a Vegas ass hollow show in the <laughs> middle of Kamurocho, essentially. Yeah. Kabuki Cho. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, um, it is fucking worth it if you're not a local and you're not sick of this thing existing in your neighborhood already. Uh, robot restaurant. Holy shit. Um, just honestly, like, Google the words robot restaurant and look at the pictures that pop up and you'll understand. Like, I saw the pictures and I saw the colors and I was like, oh, yeah, no, that's that's me. I need to experience this mm -hmm, in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did not regret it. And that's what we ended the trip on. So, fuck yeah. That was good. Um, and uh, uh, um, 
Uh, yeah, I guess my new love is umeshu, which what is, is that? it is plum wine. It is sweet. And I had del- plum wine there. Did you? Yes. I had it once. I didn't think to mention it. It's good. It's fucking good. It's real good. Super duper strong. Yeah, um, actually. Now that I think of it. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 that, that goes down deceptively easy. Uh, really, really, really into that. On the rocks in particular. Um, and uh, shout outs to uh, Ludwig. Really, really cool. A person I had dinner with. That uh, happens to be uh, someone working at Koji Pro who was like, hey, would you like to come sit down and have some dinner? And I'm like, sure. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds cool. And he, he, took, he took me out to a cool place and um, we, had some good, we had, a good, had a good talk, had a good time, and that was fun. So I want to give a shout out to uh, Mr. Composer Man over there working on Death Stranding. You're doing good stuff. Really? It's the composer? Yes. Super cool. Did you ask him if the game will have good music? I did. Okay. What did he say? No. Oh. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> so. Well. We'll see how that go. That's that. Um, I actually, I, I, I actually uh, grilled him about the track I really, really love at the end of, um, of, of uh, Phantom Pain. Mm-hmm. Right. During that, that finale sequence. There's an amazing swelling track that plays that's not on the soundtrack. It's only in the game version. I'm like, what the fuck's up with that? And he's like, bruh, it's years ago, man. Like, I don't fucking... I don't know. <laughs> like, what? I'm like, oh! You know, but, Typical uh, fanboy. It was good. It was It was good. Um, I'm very, very excited for how things are going to shape up in that game. Uh, Japan. Japan's good. Owari. And, of course, the other thing, too, to think about is... I keep I, I kept kind of bumming Steph the fuck out because every time something was happening, I was like, "Well, this will be the last time we ever experience this, so take it all in, drink it in now." Because the second trip to Japan was a bit of a like stretch miracle in the sense that I felt like the first time around, she was like, "Yeah, let's go." I've never been anywhere like that. That sounds great. Yeah. The next second time around, it's like we're going that far around the world to go back to the same place instead of somewhere else. And I was like. Well, yeah, because I'm attached to this place in particular, oh, as opposed no. to anything around it. And poor weeb. And she's like, woolly. yeah, and she's like, yeah, but I'm I'm a normie. I'm not a weeb, so I don't <laughs> care about those things. It'd be cool to go to other countries and yeah. experience the other things there too. And you're like, I don't want to go to other countries. I want to <laughs> see my big robot. <laughs> That's basically it, you know. And uh, but but. Thankfully, my plan has worked of like just s- s- sneaking in, like injecting a little of the JoJo and like You're little such persona. A stupid so now she's like, "Oh yeah, I had more fun. I totally got the references to stuff this it's time. Not, it's not going to take. It totally worked, and 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 she enjoyed that stuff a bit more to the point where it'd be like, could we do it a third time? You Maybe could. Maybe you if could. Other trips are pl- are mi- mixed together with it. Yeah, you know." But the idea of yeah, getting back on a thing for a, tra- a a plane for that long, flying back around the world to go to the same destination, it's like to anyone who doesn't have that attachment to that country in particular, why would you give a fuck to do that? Why not go somewhere else? It makes perfect sense, you know. So that's why I'm just kind of like, well, might not ever see this again. So we'll I want to go to the country that's in my video game because you that's know- the end of the sentiment. Yeah, and this is and, and honestly, like if you're both huge fucking weebs then you don't have to question that yeah that's just gonna be where you go but that's not the case here so we got to think about it a little bit more so it's it's all right you know i'm fine with that you're not fine with that how'd your week go um yeah i gotta catch up on all this cool shit that's come out and uh i need an excuse to um wear and use some of the cool shit i bought uh that that outfit of uh, that full-on hakama and yeah like yukata and robe and shit i bought that yeah i have it now <laughs> you just walk around downtown with i that? have no occasions ever to use them that's a video expense but i fucking purchased them and i am not regretting it in any way shape or form i will find a use for it 
and I will find a use for some of the other fun things I bought. I even got the little um, the the getta, the the wooden mugen shampoo, yeah, sandals. Click, 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 walking around. So yeah, I'm gonna find. I'm gonna, I'm, yeah, it's a video expense. I'm gonna find uses for it in some way, shape, or form. Um, it's among, a prop now, amongst other things. Tons of. I got. I got a bunch of props. I got a bunch of props. I will be using. Hey, Wooly. Yes. If they want to see you use these stupid fucking props, yes. where would they check that out? Uh, it's over on Wooly Versus on YouTube, and of course, Wooly Versus on Twitch. God. Damn um, it. Shout outs to. Um, uh, Osaka as the chiller place to stay this time around. Uh, by the way, of, of of the Japans, of the many Japans, Osaka was a chill place. Um, shout outs to Michelle for housing us. That was very very cool. Thank you, Michelle. And uh, we got to hang out at like. Did I mention? Um, I forgot what I mentioned last time, but tripped into the coolest. I just is as you were t- you were talking. I remembered something about Osaka. We found this amazing fun bar dive dive bar called a55 right now na- no, okay well i went to go i went to go to cross up which is where the osaka fgc meets of up. course it is uh, i went in had some games played some sam show it was fun a little brief dogoro's playing grinding it out good time uh and right next door to that was this place called a55 and it was basically someone's living room with posters and fucking setups and mario kart and like everything just over the top a poster of jojo not modern jojo but 1993 satoshi khan jojo screaming at you toys and things everywhere and then it happens to just be a bar um it was amazing really good time highly recommended just very small seating room sat down next to two osaka locals they taught me some kansai ben we talked about mecca we talked about kof we had a good time um that sounds nice lots of people lots of people talking about SNK these days, actually. Yeah, lots of people. But uh, so shout outs to all that. And like, yeah, if you want a more chill, relaxed experience, definitely hit up. What's going on with the SNK? That's weird. What is going on with the SNK? Well, let's let's go into the news, shall we? FemC could do it. Yeah, she could. You know, there was FemC merch. We found the last and only pieces of FemC merch in Japan. It was crazy. Cool. All right, we did it. That's a pod. That's our first regular ass podcast in quite a bit. Cool. Nice chunky podcast. I like it. I'm, I I hope Tara gets announced tomorrow. I'm already missing the vending machines really badly. I don't don't even don't even dude every 2 seconds and you're like Yes. Yeah, I could go for another boss coffee. Yes, I could go for another boss yeah, coffee. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could go for another boss coffee like <laughs> Undernight in birth exe late clr confirmed for the uniclear Switch. uniclear is coming to the switch uniclear and sounds PS4, like a fucking course. acne product yeah, we just give up trying to like this is this franchise don't we don't we leave it alone we leave it alone walking through japan seeing the shirts that they had on sale at the, at wego and all their other like hip joints where they have these just like there's a bunch of gibberish shirts that uh, Rach and Austin and Steph all bought, and I would have bought a ton myself, but obviously there are no woolly sizes in Japan. But I love the gibberish, and I love the paragraphs of nonsense, um, and this game is dedicated to that spirit, that feeling. <laughs> that feeling of English as a fancy, cool thing to see. It doesn't matter. Don't read it. Um I mean, I was walking through the store, like, guffawing at shirts, and it was kind of like, I wonder if they even know or can tell why or what. I wonder if the, if, if the trendy kids shopping here even understand remotely what's going on here. And the funniest part was one of the ones I saw had uh, kanji on the side as well, and even the Japanese was gibberish garbage, too. That's great. So it was just, it was right across the board. That's fantastic. You're in Kamurocho, Tokyo. Mm-hmm. Instead of Kabuchi, uh, Kabuchi, Kabuchi Cho. Cho. But yeah, I just started having panic attacks out of the blue. Actually, 
the first one happened when we came back from Japan. I, that's why I was I was thinking of that. <laughs> I was thinking of that, yeah. and I and I, I was gonna bring that up, but I like I thought I didn't think that was the first one. I thought that was like the most poignant one because I feel like you were kind of building up sort of just a negative like like feeling going to mm, work for sure for a while for before sure. that and from what i remember at least like it was kind of just like a y- y- there's a point that you hit which is a point that i'm very familiar with and was at the time at least which is like fuck me i gotta go to work right like the feeling of like i cannot take going into this place yeah. anymore it is it is everything i don't want right mm-hmm. and it takes like, everything for you to be able to it takes everything for you to get yeah. up and go there in the yeah. morning right and then once you get there you can sufficiently do your job and like forget about it almost mm-hmm. and then when you check out it's just like thank fucking god it's the best feeling yeah. in the world and then the next morning it's the exact same thing yeah and i remember that and uh but like yeah when we went to japan the first time and came back and then like it was almost it was like two weeks of like fucking just having fun and checking out this another world yes. you know and, and then i was looking for it it was, was keeping me going mm-hmm. you know what i mean knowing that i had this two week break mm-hmm. and i'd never taken a vacation like that before in my life mm. you know I, i'd gone to cuba on march break in high school so i did get that but otherwise when we went to Japan, it was five or six years after, like, living as an adult. Mm-hmm. And I spent all my breaks going home. You know, it's just like, if yeah, I have vacation, yeah, yeah, yeah. I live away. I live a province away from my family and a lot of my friends. So I would spend the majority of my time there. And I never really thought, like, what can I do for fun? That was the default was just that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So the combination of, wow, I'm doing something for myself. And it's the first time I'm doing something like this, kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hate this job. And I really, like, cannot wait to have this two-week break. Mm-hmm. And then even in Japan, just like, oh, shit, we're going back home soon. Oh, no. Oh, no, there's only four days left. Oh, no, there's only three days left. Oh, no, there's only two days left mm-hmm. tomorrow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you kept it pretty hidden. Yeah. At the time. Yeah. <laughs> you mean in Japan? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I, I, I always have those kinds of thoughts in terms of even when I would go home visit my ex- uh, extended family in New Brunswick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the kind of person, I would be the worst person to have a terminal in- illness because everything will be like, this is the last time in the fall on a Sunday that I'm going to get to do this thing. I just, I'm con- I'm never, it's, it, I'm not in the moment. Mm-hmm. And constantly because i have two sides of my family we I, we just know so many people there i'm like this is the last campfire i'm gonna have with these people okay, this is you my just, last you, yeah, breakfast yeah, with yeah. Pipa. Oh, yeah, this is... yeah, yeah. so in japan that same kind of thought is happening you know but i even learned... though we went back <laughs> but you know i'm gonna go home now and i won't get to do this yeah so i've learned to try to put those thoughts away because i know it pulls morbid. me away from the moment well <laughs> so this is fucking morbid but yeah i know yeah i know <laughs> i've got to work on that but yeah that 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 thought was there uh so it, it, obviously it's easier to put it put aside but when there's like two days left one day left then it's like okay now it's reality and then it becomes harder yeah and then upon actually getting back it was like the ultimate hyper concentrated version of like waking up in the morning and going back to work because yes. it's coming off of the high that is two weeks in fucking Japan. Yeah. Yeah. 